How's it going everybody? Before we get to the topic at hand, we do have a video sponsor today. Amino is an app with communities for pretty much every possible interest you might have. But as I'm sure we're all gamers here, and as this channel is about For Honor, that's a community we should probably check out. There are thousands of members in the For Honor community, and you can look at the life layer, who's online right now, and see what's trending and what people are up to right at this second. Or you can check it out for yourself and look through the many different topics. There are in-depth guides, like this anti-conqueror one here, not only videos with timestamps, but also a written portion. And how did Mr. Pope put it so nicely? It is a meme-loving community. So if you're looking for those, or you just want some nice artwork, you can find it here, like this Warden fan art. Also, we all know what an experience it is to queue solo in this game. Here you can find many different chat rooms with people to play with. And because of all the new players recently that look for guidance from the community, I made a poll that hopefully makes it easier starting out. Feel free to vote as well. Check out the app, you won't regret it. Well, let's get going. Today's topic is going to be out of lock stagger. Before we dive in, we're going to get some basic things out of the way. What is out of lock stagger? Well, if you get hit while you're not locked on, then a lengthy stagger is applied to you. Depending on the type of attack, and also depending on what hero hits you, that stagger time varies. There's no rule to it, no pattern or anything you could go by, as there are plenty of exceptions. What needs mentioning is that when you lock on during your stagger, doesn't affect the length of it. The times are measured are from the moment you get hit, until the moment your guard becomes active. Another peculiar thing about it is that the out of lock stagger has an effect on your guard direction. Normally, as we all know, characters have a set guard direction when you first lock on. Like you see here, Raiders is on the right. If I change that guard and then get hit while not locked on, my guard will not return to the right position, but instead stay top, as that was the last position I had it in before I got hit. This is consistent with every guard direction and all characters. I have no idea why this is the case, and I'm also not sure whether this is intended behavior. It's not a big deal in the end, yet it is a little weird. Oh, and also, don't bother trying to roll away. As you all might have guessed by now, hitting someone out of luck might guarantee some nice combos for certain characters. We went through the trouble of testing nearly all of them. I'll go down the roster and try to list them in order of usefulness. Even though she doesn't get the most damage out of it, Shaman's heavies share a 1100 millisecond stagger, which is at the top end of possible staggers. And because it also staggers for that amount on her leaping heavies, this makes her the best character for these sort of situations. It's easy to chase down a runner with her, and if you land that attack, you get a guaranteed second heavy. The unblockable can be parried, and the bleed stab can also be blocked. So I guess it's not completely broken, also... A lot of you are probably gonna disagree here. The next two also get an 1100 millisecond stagger on their top heavies. Both Raid and Kensei can land a follow-up side heavy because of the speed of the comboed attack. Raid tops the chart with 80 damage, and Kensei gets 65. Sadly for Kensei, despite the long staggers on his nicely tracking dash attacks, he only gets light follow-ups. Now a surprising character for most. Many of you were disappointed when you got nerfed and got the 600 millisecond side dodge recovery, but here his side heavy guarantees him a side heavy finisher 
which nets him 75 damage. His dash attacks also give more than one might expect. Highlander has long staggers, but can only land the simple second heavy. Uh, that's also confirmed on Celtic Curse. Now I guess we're already entering the sad part of the punishes. Stuff like Centurion who gets two heavies, nothing spectacular and I guess he's better off trying to just get a pin on an unsuspecting opponent. Others like Zerker, he has a nice double heavy combo but he fails to combo anything on dodge attacks. Orochi at least has some chase down potential but only confirms lights on most of his attacks. And the funny thing is, Storm Rush gives him fuck all. The lights are a trend in general. Conqueror also only gets a light. Lawbringer can only combo heavy into light. Even though the stagger length is alright, he just has no other option. Warlord has the same issue, at least his combo top light does 20 damage I guess. Nabushi can either do Viper's Retreat or combo into a kick. A triple light might have been nice, but no, nothing. A lot of characters also have the issue that despite them having long staggers, they lack either a fast second heavy or a heavy into light combo. Gladiator is stuck with Toaster. Goki takes the cake though, as he gets absolutely nothing despite having the maximum 1100 millisecond stagger. Shinobu is also a little sad, I mean getting off a sickle rain would have been very nice, but sadly he's stuck with nothing but his guaranteed light after heavy. PK only confirms another attack if she does a light. But I'm pretty sure she'll just use Leap and Heavy into Bleed Stab and won't bother with the stagger anyways. I didn't bother with Valkyrie or Warden as I get the reworks pretty soon anyways. So don't even think of complaining in the comments, testing all that shit took long enough. Before we finish though, a huge thanks to Allmeister who did all this with me in one sitting. Thank you very much. And also thanks to you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. Laters everybody.